Hello, community. So great to be back. Today we talk about science AI. Yes, multi-agent systems that do all the scientific work for us. Now, this is the dream. An AI scientist that can independently formulate hypotheses, run all the experiments, drive the scientific discovery. I think this is the most exciting frontier in artificial intelligence. And yes, of course, I agree with you. You might say, hey, this is the only thing why we have AI for scientific development. Yes, absolutely. And today we have a brilliant new benchmark called Auto Experiment from our friends at Carnegie Mellon University. Now what they do, they show us here in a real brutal, clear and an empirical way that there are monumental challenges ahead in building real autonomous research agents. And they show us here that it's not a performance that gets a little bit, you know, it's a little bit diminishing. No. The moment we increase the complexity a little tiny bit, we have a performance that falls off a cliff. It is devastating. So what is the core concept of today? Easy. We go from reproduction of a scientific paper with its GitHub repo to the replication of the code via a progressive code masking. Yes, the good old bird model, the sentence bird model. Yes, we have code masking here. So couldn't be easier from the concept, no? So the central idea bridged the gap between two fundamental scientific validation tasks. At first, we have to reproduce the experiment, taking the original code and the environment and running it, like say in Python or C++, whatever is the environment, and get the same result as the author. So this validates not the result, the published result by the author. And then, then we have to replicate it. So taking only the paper description and writing new code from scratch to independently arrive at the same results. Now this validates now the methodology itself. So let's have a closer look to this. And here we go. The input is easy. No? The complete research paper. Of course, we, we remove here the numerical results because we want that the code calculates the numerical results. We have the complete code base here and a set of command line instructions to run the old experiment. So whatever you find in a classical modern GitHub, everything is there. You just have to click go. And the complete uh, computer simulation of the experiments is executed and the result is presented to you. Now, the challenge is now that within the code base, a number of key functions, let's say n, let's say n equal 1 or 2 or 3, have the body completely removed, replaced with not implemented error. So you see, they are now holes somewhere in the code base, and the task is now for the LLM, hey, write this code, understanding exactly the scientific challenge, understanding exactly the code before and the after, and then, just for a little piece, just write the code. And the goal is clear. No? The agent must understand the scientific paper, understand here how the code is based, let's say Python or C++ or whatever you have, generate the correct, let's say, Python code for n equal 1, 2, 3, mask function, execute, no, run the experiment here in a sandbox environment, and report the final numerical result. And they say, hey, listen, no problem, you give it a plus minus 5% margin. It's not absolutely precise, but plus minus 5%. And here we have the paper from our colleagues here from Carnegie Mellon University, June 24, 2025, from reproduction to replication, evaluating research agent, yeah, with progressive code masking. What a beautiful, simple, but brilliant idea. So what we have, we have a simple input. As I told you, we have the complete scientific paper. I don't know, 40, 50 pages here, a detailed description of what is happening. Then the complete GitHub. But yeah, in the GitHub, we have the code and all the experiment, just run Python main dot whatever. But now in the code base, they say, okay, somewhere, some definition, some functions, we eliminate. No? We say, hey, we remove the code, and this is exactly where you have to write code. And I would say, that's easy. We, we have cursor, we have insert, we have whatever you use. That is simple. That is not a challenge for any LLM. No? Especially, we go with agents with very powerful LLMs. No, we have tools, whatever you want. We have memory. These are one of the best agents you can build, you can find, you can buy. And then we have a simple evaluation. Huh? We run the experiment and we get the numerical data. And we know exactly correct or incorrect. 
five components that define its agent. We have the initial prompt, the system and the user prompt describing here the task to the agent, what is a price. Then we give it tool use. We say, hey, have a lot of tool. Tool definitions, similar to found here to your standard benchmark, beautiful. A give the agent the ability to navigate the repo, manipulate files, execute script, correct files, edit files, do whatever you want. You get all the tools that you need for this job and more. And then step-by-step step, promoting a strategy. So the agent can be promoted to reason and output actions in different ways. Everything is free. You have a history management, you have memory. You, the agent can look back at its own historic actions, see what worked, what did not work, can scroll back, interact with the environment. The history of its interaction grows. It's available for the LLM to reason about those results. I mean, couldn't be better, no? And of course, they decided to go with GPT-4 Omni, GPT-4 Omni Mini, Cloud 3.5 Sonnet and Cloud 3.7 Sonnet. Now, at the time, Cloud 4 was not out, so we have to go with those. Tools available, I told you here, you have all the actions from inspect lines, write files, move, execute script, list files, understand file, change the directory, file and arts, observatory, input, everything available. Now, there's a ton of data, description, numerical data, benchmark data, I just jump now to the results. If you want to read more, just have a look at the paper yourself. And here we have it now. And you say, wow, what do we have? We have here the number of n, so we increase the complexity here on the x-axis and on the y-axis. We have the pass rate in percentage. No? And you see, we start here, GPT-4 and Claude 3.5 and 3.7. Never mind, you see, more or less, they have the same development. So I don't really distinguish between those models. You see, it's almost the same. So we start here, n equal 1, yet 35, 36, 37, wherever, 32 percent. And then if we just increase the complexity for one step, n equal 2, it's, it's a cliff. It's, it's almost a, a, a vertical dive. We go here with, what is this, GPT-4 Omni Mini, below 3 percent, 4 percent. Almost zero. So this is absolutely fascinating. Yeah? Why? Because the agent, this means at the core of the agent, we have our LLM, and it's a huge LLM. A Cloud 3.7 Sonnet is not a small model. So the agent needs now to handle the interdependency because now it has to write two elements of code, the shared logic, conflicting variable name, conflicting data types, maybe in the two functions to generate, and look at the result. This is about 10% at n equal 2. This is devastating, just to be clear. This is not a drop in the performance, this is a performance cliff that we have here. No? So you see, this is, if you increase the complexity from 1 to 2, this is, yeah, the first major hurdle for autonomous AI scientists we have to fix this, we have to find a solution to this, this is not acceptable. Because then, yes, yeah, three, four, five, it's just, you can forget about it. But, positive side. Yes, there's something positive. If you have, and you understand, hey, this is an LLM, this is an autoregressive system, this has to do with a probability distribution, this is just by chance. Just give it more time. Let it run another time, and 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 then you're at the green with five runs. And then you just pick the best of those five, and you say, hey, wow, look at this. If I only have in blue, I just let it run one time, I had 35%, never mind the model. But if I let it run five times and I choose the best one, I'm at 48%. My goodness, I'm almost at 50%, and you say, it's devastating. No, we have to see it from the positive side, 48%. With Claude, it is less significant here from 31 to 42. Okay, never mind. But you see, it is an improvement. So there's the potential improvement because we work with probability LLMs. Just let it run five times, 10 times, 100 times, 1000 times. Maybe it will find a good solution sometimes in the future. So great. So there is that we have this chance, yeah, a perfect verifier might be able to pick the best solution. But this is not really satisfying, yeah? But much more interesting is now, hey, what freedom do we give this agent, yeah? Dynamic versus fixed interaction. 
And here on the left hand side, you see here the max reasoning token. Here we go really to the limit. Yeah? As you can see here in orange, we have O3, and in blue, we have O1. And you see, yeah, there is an improvement, a little bit of the success rate starting at 10%, going up to, my goodness, I don't know, 22, 24%. And you see, okay, this is your pipeline that retrieves the, the textual context fills in the code and submits it and executes it, gets a result, and this is it. There is no debugging, there is no reasoning about the result when run. Beautiful. This is the performance, let's say 20%, the final, the best performance. And now we change this. We say, hey, we let you interact as much as you want. Use your suite of tools as much as you want. Edit files, execute script multiple turns, go explore code, rewrite code, debug the code, optimize the code, go back to theoretical, I don't know, physics, jump around, take your time, whatever you want, and we reach here a maximum new high of 30%. 30% success rate. Okay, so you see, okay, it's at least a little bit more. No? It's, it's a little bit better if we give it the freedom to just use all the tools. Now, they say the best result we achieved is for GPT-4 Omni. The dynamic agent has achieved here 35% pass rate, while the fixed, so this one here on the left, manages only 8%. And they claim now, hey, we have a four times improvement, 4x improvement. Isn't this possible? Isn't this beautiful? Well, 35% is not amazing. This is it where we are today. And now they tell us here, in general, their result is... All this scientific experimentation with AI and with coding and understanding and reasoning and whatever is an iterative process. It's pure trial and error. And ability to debug, to reason, to come back, to have multiple agents, it is not a luxury. It is a critical performance step that we have to do. And they say, you know, we found that the agents framework at the first attempt fails at a staggering almost 70% of the times. 70% of the time it fails. This is not what I would recommend as a science AI. You know? But you let it run again and again and again and debug and again and run and debug and again. And maybe you are lucky, you know, like a lotto. Sometimes you will have here a winner that is at 35%. Great. This is not what is science AI. You know? So the Talus future work must focus here on much more clever architectures of agent, multi-agent interaction, dynamic, interactive loops. No? Plus, we have to enhance the LLM reasoning capabilities of all those LLMs that are at the core of our agents to really have something or come close to science AI systems. There's some other insights I like here, quite a lot of. No? Because they ask, hey, you know what? We can do something. If we mask more and more code, yeah, what becomes more important for the agent in the performance? That it understands here the remaining code that is not masked? Or understanding here, absolutely here on a deep level, the research paper? The human intentions by the human researcher? Does it really understand the methodology? The, the logic behind why this experiment was set up? Does the theoretical, theoretical, physical understanding of an experiment help in writing code? Or is it just focus on code? You don't have to understand anything about physics or whatever. Just go with code, code, code. And here you see the result. In blue, the line here, you see no retrieval only gives agent access to the code. So this is the performance if you have just code access. In orange, you see if you have access to the theoretical scientific paper itself. So if the LLM, the agent, multi-agent, whatever you have, have access to the paper, to the theoretical understanding, to the human explanation of the experiment, what are they doing? Why are they doing? What is critical to understand the experiment? Then the general performance to do all these exercises, do this benchmark, is better. Now, just between you and me, the difference I would have expected to be much more dominant, significant. I don't know, it's 5 percentage points, 7 percentage points. 
I mean, yeah, it is better. No, no discussion. Yeah, this is better, the orange one, than the blue one. But it's not really, you know. So there is a lot of work to do for LLM reasoning and LLM coding. This is not satisfiable. And you might say, but why? Corsa is so perfect. Yeah, at low complexities. If you are here, but the moment you go out in higher complexities, from real scientific complexities, not how to build a homepage, not to build a button, not to build something trivial. But if you go into scientific discovery, the models just crash. So you see, at the start, both are more or less identical, 35, 36, whatever, great. But the more you go on here, the better it is if the LLM, if the large language model has access to the paper and understands here the ideas of the team. Now, the result here by Carnegie Mellon, they tell us, hey, we think it's important to understand both the formal code and the scientific natural language here. But we kind of elegantly demonstrate that the task scales in difficulty, the more it gets complicated. The reliance of a high-level conceptual understanding from the scientific paper becomes paramount. So, you have the LLM has to understand the experiment. Just looking at the code is not enough. Just having access to another GitHub is not enough. You have to have the intellectual capability to understand the experiment. Great. I have some takeaways for me. Maybe you agree with me. Maybe you do not agree with me. So the paper ends here if you want. This is now my reflection. Complexity is a killer for all the current LLMs. Current LLMs, and we have seen this here in the numerical data, and please have a look at the paper. It's beautiful. LLMs cannot handle the comp combinatorial explosion of dependencies that arise when implementing even two related functions from scratch for science AI. I mean, this is a statement that hurts, that personally hurts in my heart, if I have to tell you this. And the second, and now to the positive part, verification is a golden opportunity. We are talking here about autoregressive system, next token prediction system. Just let it run. Give it time. Maybe we are in probability distributions. No? Maybe you will find with time a good solution. So let it run multiple attempts, multiple, multiple runs of the same task. Third, for me, those interactions, those agentic features are non-negotiable. You have to have them. No? True, if you want, so really powerful research agent must be able to dynamically interact with the environment. They must have access to the real world. They must have been able to validate the result, their understanding, their tests. And they have to have the ability to debug their own failures in interaction with the environment, with the experiment, with the real world out there. If we just feed them synthetic data, this is not enough. They have to develop their own experiences. And again and again and again, language, large language model on the foundation here of the complete reasoning process, of the complete science process, of the complete coding process. Because as the task scale towards full replication here of a science AI, the ability to ground coding in the high level concept, in the theoretical concept of theoretical physics or chemistry, everything that is described in the scientific paper is essential. So it is about the reasoning capabilities of LLM. But I say, or I dare to say after reading this paper, Oh my goodness, there's a long road ahead of us to creating a true AI scientist, a science AI multi-agent system. We are light years away from it. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. You are not depressed. You do not want to go out in nature and say, I am now stop with my computer. I need some, some free time now. I do something else and then I come back in 10 minutes and then I continue to improve artificial intelligence for the good of humanity. If you feel this great, then why not subscribe and I see you in my next video.